Now, as of late, I have been speaking quite a bit about the field watch and just field watches in general. I think there's a ton of history involved with the pieces, utility that also comes in tandem with that. But when looking at it from a modern context, the reason why field watches make a ton of sense in my eyes is they have, I think, a lot of versatility that is just going to be available to you as a consumer, whether you are just getting started in your collection or you have a collection that is well solidified. But today we're gonna to be looking at, I would say three of some of the best options from the range $300 and below for getting, say, your first field watch. Now for the trio that we're gonna be looking at here today, the Bull of the Hack watch, then the SRPG27 from Seiko, their new Seiko 5 field watch, and then rounding it out with the Marathon General Purpose. So all these watches are some of my personal favorites and for under $300 are probably going to be in the wheelhouse for many people that might just want to get into this world of field watches for the first time. So what we'll do in this video is first go over the essential characteristics and some history here to begin, just to kind of set the foundation for what constitutes a field watch. Then we'll move into an overview of all of these pieces and just kind of the major points to call out. Then at the end, kind of look at these watches from a different perspective on which one would be the right one to go for, because despite these being all field watches, they are having their own distinct characteristics that would allow them to be more of a suitable choice for a certain type of individual. And then to round it out, talk about maybe the elephant in the room or the things that are just out of reach if you did spend a little bit more money. So guys, let's jump into the video and take a look at these three watches. Before jumping into this video, I do want to mention watch consultations on teddybaldesar.com. These are dedicated watch specialists that will be able to speak to you if you have any questions about something you're looking to purchase on our site. Uh, the people that are going to be taking these calls have been in the industry for some time. They are all watch nerds. They love watches to death. So just kind of watch nerds, helping out other watch nerds. Really simple as that. Really excited about this feature. So do not be shy in booking a time to chat with one of them. Also, we have just announced a new brand on the site with Ball Watch Company. This is a very special announcement for me because they are having just roots in Cleveland, Ohio. They were started in 1891 by Webb C. Ball. He was a watchmaker and watch store owner and jeweler in Cleveland, Ohio, where I am currently based. He was a very influential individual when it came to both the booming railway industry as well as watchmaking in the United States in the earlier part of the 20th century. So definitely check out the different collection of ball watches. Very excited about this brand being on the store because of course that Cleveland connection uh, and just having some just pride here, I think does make it even sweeter. So to begin the basic field watch design as we know it today stems from military watches designed for allied forces fighting in World War II. With then American brands like Hamilton and Bulova producing well over a million watches in a now familiar format with stout cases and dials with printed Arabic numerals and luminescent material on those dials. Over the years, the formula has evolved in many cases adding 24 hour time, but the basic design has remained much of the same and cemented itself as an icon with utility design for the battlefield environment that also lends itself to more mundane day-to-day -day operations. Now, before we dig in here, it's important to take up a discussion of what constitutes a field watch in a modern context. Essential elements include military design inspiration. You also have a heavy emphasis on legibility here, durability that also could at least theoretically handle battlefield conditions, and at least some water resistance for some worry-free use. Loom is also important and a strap choice in keeping with these requirements. Now, given the theoretical standard issue wartime use case, Field watches also tend to be more on the inexpensive side, and these three are excellent examples of just how much you can get for your money at an affordable price, with each of these still presenting a distinctive take on this overall design formula. Now, it's important to note here that I've done complete reviews on all of these watches in the past, so I'll leave the links down below to those if you want even greater detail. So in this video, I'll stick to more of an overview for each of the watches and discuss the major points that will play into the just comparison portion towards the end. Starting with the Bulova VWI Hack. So this watch is a special edition of the standard hack watch designed in collaboration with the Veterans Watch Initiative. It's a nonprofit organization that provides free of charge watchmaking training for veterans, especially disabled ones. So a very good cause here. Now compared to the other watches in this video, the VWI Hack is the most I would say straightforward. It's also a vintage inspired option with what I would call a saving private Ryan type of feel overall. 
In terms of the case and where the 38 millimeter hack case leans into a simple utilitarian architecture with crisp case lines and 90 degree angles at the lugs. All finished with brushing, which differs in its direction from the case back to the mid case to that bezel, providing some visual interest while maintaining a subdued military feel. Now the large non screw down crown is signed and knurled, making for easy operation, though this watch is only rated for 30 meters of water resistance, which probably is the biggest downside of this piece but it is capable in a vintage context, but perhaps not as much in 2021. Flipping the watch over, we have a closed case back featuring the VWI logo and kind of tribute and tying this piece even more strongly to his military roots in this nonprofit mission. On the wrist, this 38 by 47 millimeter case offers a moderate and understated appearance. Set within 20 millimeter lugs, we have a green gray nylon military style strap with steel hardware, which is of a reasonable quality, though this strap probably isn't ideal for smaller wrist simply because it does lack the holes. So opting for something new might be in your best interest, such as a NATO strap or a Cordura strap. At 13.55 millimeters, this is also not the thinnest watch on the market, though much of the height stems from the heavily domed mineral crystal keeping watch over the dial below. With simple square hour markers and a printed minute track sitting just outside the printed Arabic markers, a secondary 24 hour scale just within, and a Loom Cathedral handset, this dial leans into the World War II era inspiration strongly, only interrupting the central matte black dial surface with a bull of a signature at noon and the word automatic at six. In terms of loom, the square markers 12 hour scale and the hands are inlaid with loom that glows with reasonable incandescence, though not as strong as one of the other options on this list, which we'll get to. To provide some context, as we move over to the caliber, Bulova sits under the Citizen Watch Group umbrella, a principal reason for the inclusion of this 8000 series Miyota automatic powering this watch, though this 82 S0 differs from the standard 8215 that it does hack and does have the drop of a date. So nice having a hacking functionality here as when you're talking about a watch that is labeled the hack watch, probably makes some sense. And when thinking about it from a military context, makes even further sense. Sliding over to the Seiko SRPG27, we have the latest installment of the Seiko 5 field watch with its predecessors, the 37 millimeter SNK series and the 42 millimeter SNZGs. Both enthusiast favorite watches, but with dimensions many considered maybe too small on the SNK side and then too big on the SNZG side. And both also had the less than favored non-hacking, non-handwinding 7S caliber included with both of the cases, which left the door open for Seiko with this more mid-size option with its upgraded 4R caliber within. In terms of the case finishing, the SRPG27 presents a more modern and more refined take with brushing featured on the case's interior surfaces and polishing at the case flanks. A large non-screw down crown is unsigned, but still offers an impressive 100 meters of water resistance. And in addition, we have an exhibition case back as well to take a look at the far from beautiful, but upgraded caliber. Between the lugs, we do have a bracelet that frankly is what you pay for. Though the near universal 20 millimeter lug size should offer a wide variety of alternative straps, including a variety of nylon straps that I think really would suit this type of watch. Now, speaking to the watch on the wrist, the SRPG27 offers a pleasing wearing experience with a set of dimensions in keeping with modern taste, wearing like a true 40 millimeter watch, in my opinion, despite its 39.4 millimeter diameter. Now, the thickness here is reasonable at 13.2 millimeters, with again, a lot of that stemming from a dome hardlex crystal, providing an especially clear view of the more modern field watch dial resting beneath. At the dial outskirts, a simple minute track printed in white is interrupted at five minute positions by rectangular loom plots with a larger triangular loom index at the 12. All are set against a primary matte charcoal colored central dial surface and the Arabic markers are all metallic and erased from the dial surface with the 24 hour markers printed just within. Like a lot of other Seiko 5s, we have a day date function and a metallic colored five signature resting beneath the Seiko at the 12, balanced by automatic and cursive at the six. As you'd expect, the loom on the square markers and the pencil hands 
They glow just powerfully and is definitely the best of the trio on display here today. And is a strong point for this watch overall, along with the water resistance of 100 meters. Flipping the watch over, we have a clear view of the undecorated 4R36 caliber, offering the modern conveniences of hacking and hand winding, not found in the 7S series of calibers utilized in previous Seiko 5 field watches. Now moving over to what is perhaps the farthest afield watch from the three, we have the Marathon General Purpose Mechanical, which is Marathon's answer for land-based military troops to go along with their SAR collection for diving and nautical services and the Navigator collection for pilots and air crews. Taking a totally different approach to the field watch formula, the GPM case is actually constructed in a composite material, which allows for an extremely lightweight feel, as well as the ability to cast the case in a variety of different colors. With this GPM being available in black, olive green, or this coyote shade of brown that we have here. Now the case back comes in stainless steel, and then there's also an unsigned crown located at the three, rated for 30 meters of water resistance for this watch. So another point going against the water resistance here. This watch though, of the three, is the only one equipped with a flat sapphire crystal, which does make this one appear a little less warm in its appearance, but will offer a slimmer form factor and will resist basic scratches to a higher degree. In terms of its wear, the GPM is truly a small watch with a presence informed by its 34.5 millimeter by 40.6 millimeter case construction, 16 millimeter lugs, and a thinner feeling stemming from the simple 16 millimeter nylon pull through strap. So thickness here is going to be the thinnest of this trio, but in terms of perceived dimensions, it's only gonna be slightly thinner when you actually have this one on the wrist because of those other two, most of that thickness again is going to come from the doming of those crystals rather than the actual case construction itself. All the thickness is going to be housed in the actual case or the central case of this watch. Now, while the general dial design of this marathon is pure field watch, with printed 12 hour and 24 hour Arabic markers, simple hash marks for the minutes, and restrained dial text set over a primary matte black background, this watch in much of Marathon's collection's biggest move is the use of self-illuminating tritium tubes in the dark markers and hands, which gives this dial a three-dimensional feel that draws the eyes in. As a quick note on tritium, it is a material that is constantly illuminating, but will not shine as bright as the other watches, instead opting for that constant illuminating nature that will not fade drastically like that of the other luminescent materials out there and will be exceptionally good in very, very dark environments or in pitch black environments. In terms of timekeeping, the GPM relies on Seiko's third-party movement arm housing the NH35 within, essentially an off-the-shelf 4R caliber with hacking and hand winding functionality. While this again is nothing sexy, this is one of the more reliable third-party options you're going to have in the space coming from one of the most trusted brands as well. So now that we've looked at the details of these watches, let's dig into also what watch is going to be best for what type of scenario. So starting with the Bulova VWI hack watch. Now in terms of overall look, this is the most classic of the three, no question, presenting a design that feels just straight out of the 1940s. And if you want something that also will have connection to a manufacturer that was producing true field watches and military watches during the period, Bulova is going to be a great choice of these three. The watch of the three is gonna probably be in the middle, but leaning very close to the Seiko in terms of size. I'd say wears pretty much right in line with a 39 millimeter case when you have this one on the wrist. Thickness is going to be probably right in line with that of the Seiko. A lot of that's gonna be coming from the mineral crystal. My personal taste with the drop of the date on this one, I think it does have some great symmetry and I just love the design and the hour hand and the minute hands. I think this is a very sharp looking watch. When it comes to the movement inside, the Miyota caliber inside is going to feature hacking, which is a nice upgrade. Sometimes there's some shade that is thrown to some of these entry level Miyota caliber that don't feature hacking, but this one of course does. The water resistance here is going to leave something to be desired. So if you are wanting to really put this one through the paces so you don't have a dive watch, then this probably isn't going to be the one for you. Simply put, this is probably the watch you wanna go for if you want something that is gonna be more historically in alignment with those classic field watches of the mid 20th century. And Bulova has a lot of history on their side when they were producing these watches during the period as well. And personally, I just love the look of this one. Now, next up, we have the Seiko SRPG27. And in terms of this watch and what it's going for, definitely a more contemporary approach and a very Seiko approach. I think if you've seen any of the other Seiko 5 models and also the other models that Seiko are producing, you'll probably know what I am talking about. You have the traditional layout. You also are getting some of the field watch elements that are almost combined. You have a lot of things that were combined from the SNK 800s and then also looking at the SNZGs 
uh, kind of splitting the difference in a lot of the aspects and then getting the dial from the SNZGs in regards to featuring that day date and just some of the markers and also uh, just the overall approach that you have here. Probably the number one point going in the position of this one is going to be that 100 meters of water resistance and getting that 4R caliber. So the previous variations had those 7S movements, which I think left a lot to be desired and were certainly out of date. The 4Rs, are, I think, are bringing this one into a much more competitive range, putting it in alignment with these other two, and also getting some pretty good reliability in the process. But that 100 meters of water resistance, it's going to handle those more aquatic environments much better than the other two will. This all considered, this watch is going to be the largest of the three. So probably best suited for those that want a little bit more presence without being overbearing on the wrist, whereas like a true 40 when you have it strapped on. And then finally with the Marathon, this watch kind of mixes two elements. You have the traditional field watch elements with some distinct design approaches that are very Marathon. The dial is, I would say, very much a traditional field watch, apart from the use of tritium, of course, which is going to be something that I would say Marathon has honestly owned quite a bit as being a brand that's almost become synonymous with it. It's not gonna shine with the brightest of incandescents, but it is going to have that constant illumination. So in completely dark environments, it is going to shine better than those other two, at least throughout the entire duration of your time in the completely dark lit environment. If you're not doing anything tactically or just kind of going about military missions, I don't know how useful that's gonna be in a modern context or just a basic day-to-day -day environment, uh, but that is one note to have here. Also the composite case being another just off the beaten path type of approach here. This is going to allow this watch to wear the lightest on the wrist and by far be the smallest. I mean, this watch wears, I would say closer to that, you can go and see it on my wrist here, 34 might be even pushing it. It wears closer to that of a 33. So if you want something that's gonna be a little bit smaller on the wrist and you want some military cred with a brand that's been producing watches for armed forces, allied forces since the early 1940s, then this would be the watch to go for. But I do wanna stress, this certainly is going to be the smallest. It does have the upgrade as well with that sapphire crystal, at least a different approach in giving you a little bit more flexibility in regards to resisting scratches. And then to wrap up here, I do wanna talk about the kind of elephant in the room and that is Hamilton and then higher end Seiko field watches. Mostly Hamilton though. I know if I did not mention this, somebody would go crazy in the comments talking about Hamilton watches. And when I did the review of this Seiko watch a few weeks back, people were mentioning, oh, maybe I should get this instead of the Hamilton. Well, if you always have your eyes set on the Hamilton, say you have your eyes set on the Hamilton or maybe like a Seiko Alpinus as being probably a good competitor there, now getting new upgraded movements with these six R35s, I think you keep your eye on the prize and go for those. In terms of what Hamilton is producing, I think is going to be a superior watch than these three, but you're also talking about typically double the price in many instances. So these watches mentioned today are more of either the first time maybe getting into field watches, maybe you're not so in love with the Hamilton design style or maybe those higher end Alpinist models that you wanna go for. And you just wanna dabble in the world of field watches and get that up utility and probably just versatility that comes with these watches like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, then that's when these three are gonna make a lot more sense. Sense, but I do wanna just address for saving up a little bit more, if you do have your eye on a prize, keep that eye there and then go for those more expensive options if you really do wanna make a field watch happen for yourself. But if you just wanna get into the world of field watches for the first time, these are some of the best in this really affordable range that I can think of in 2021. But all right guys, which of these three watches would you go for? I'd love to see comments down below which one is your favorite. Also, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. That does help out the channel tremendously. Don't just say that, I do appreciate it as well. Also, definitely take advantage of that watch consultation feature on teddybaldesser.com. And then also check out those new watches from Ball Watch Company. Talked about Tritium with Marathon. Also another brand that does it very well and utilizing that is going to be Ball. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.